Hello friends, Namaskar. When you are on your path to ensure your tax compliance, particularly speaking income tax compliance, on that road, on that path, advanced tax compliance is a very important compliance. So to the public at large, through this video, I am trying to put up the idea as to when the advanced tax is payable by an SSC, how he has to determine his advanced tax would be paid as per the requirement of the law, what are the respective installments and which are the different heads that are covered under the scope of advanced tax. So I am coming up with the answers to all these questions for the benefit of public at large. Now let me first start my discussion with this conceptual point that who is the person who is liable to pay advanced tax and whether an individual is also liable to pay advanced tax. The answer is given under section 208 of Income Tax Act 1961 my dear friend which very clearly speaks that advanced tax shall be payable during a financial year in every case where the amount of such tax here such tax means advanced tax payable by the assessee during that year as computed in accordance with the provisions of this chapter is 10,000 rupees or more. So to put it in a simple manner, if your net tax payable is 10,000 rupees or more, you are liable to pay the same during the financial year as an advanced tax to the revenue. Now the question comes that what is the meaning of the term net tax? Here my dear friends, net tax term means total tax liability including surcharge, including higher education says and out of this total amount which is payable by US tax you will be reducing TDS, TCS, any double taxation relief, any MAT credit, AMT credit and then what is net payable? If that amount is 10,000 rupees or more you are liable to pay advanced tax otherwise you are free and you are not liable to pay advanced tax. Now, if you have decided that you are liable to pay advanced tax, you would be interested in knowing that, okay, Mr. Bhatia, how I have to comply with, what are the installments? That is what there is an answer which says that if you are liable to pay advanced tax, that is your tax liability is 10,000 rupees or more, net tax liability after reducing TDS, TCS, etc. On or before 15th of June of the financial year, you are liable to pay in aggregate 15%. On or before 15th of September, you are liable to pay in aggregate 45%. On or before 15th of December, you are liable to pay 75% of such net tax payable. And on or before 15th of March, you are liable to pay the full amount of advance. So if I decide this in an incremental manner, the first installment was of 15% of net tax payable, second 30% of net tax payable, third again 30% of net tax payable and fourth one is 25% of net tax payable. So this is how you have to decide that my net tax liability is paid in all these four installments duly. Let me put up this point with the help of an example so that you can understand it better that if the estimated total income of an SSC is 15 lakh rupees and therefore the total tax liability of such person is 2,73,000 rupees, the tax deducted at source 1,73,000, this is what I have assumed and the balance tax payable would be certainly 1 lakh rupees. Now this 1 lakh, this person should pay by 15th of June this much of amount, total 45 by 15th of September, total 75,000 by 15th of December and total 1 lakh rupees by 15th of March. So in an incremental manner, he has to pay 30,000 here, 30,000 here and 25,000 here. In the first installment, of course, he has paid 15,000. So this is how one person has to decide that my advance tax is paid in installments. Now, which income is liable to advance tax? This is a very important question that somebody may ask me, Mr. Bhatia, would you let me know whether salary is also subject to advance tax? So, if your employer is deducting shorter TDS, then to that extent your liability for advance tax would stand. Maybe you are earning rental income, maybe you are earning business income, you have capital gain, maybe short term, maybe long term, and you have income from other sources. To Simply speak, I would say that all heads of income are duly covered for advanced tax compliant means once you will calculate your gross total income, then total income, you will be including all heads income. So when you are saying that your net tax liability is computed after TDS, TCS, that net tax liability is calculated on all the income which you are earning. 
So it's not that on a particular head of income you are liable to pay advance tax. On all heads income which is there in your total income, you are liable to pay advance tax. So as an SSE, that is a very important point on your part. Now a question comes that, okay, Mr. Bhatia, if I understood, if I could make out that advance tax is payable by me, how would I compute my advance tax payable? One way is, which is a gross way to call it ad hoc manner. Say for example, for the last financial year when you file your return, at the time of filing return, you found that you have paid 50,000 rupees short and that 50,000 rupees has attracted you some interest liability. So you could get an idea that if in the current year also, my income is on the same level or increasing level, then at least I am supposed to pay 50,000 rupees plus some amount as an advance tax. That could at least save you some interest. That is one way of calculating. And the second method, which is a more precise way, is to call it precise manner. Under which I can suggest you, you can go to the income tax portal. There, there is an option of tax calculator also. You can write on the Google tax calculator by Income Tax Department India. You will find a tax calculator. Therein you will fill up the relevant income under the respective heads and it will give you that, okay, based on this income, your tax computation is this. Now, out of that tax computation, with that tax computation calculator would provide you, you can reduce your TDS, TCS, etc. And then what is net payable? If that is 10,000 rupees or above, then as per the four installments which I discussed with you, you can pay your tax liability on your own. So this is the way you can go into this calculation. Another way is that, okay, you can also go and consult with your tax consultant who will suggest you that, okay, this is the advanced tax payable for the current financial year based on the total income which is appearing to be at the time of discussion. Now, if you ask me, that what are the consequences of advanced tax non-compliance? What will, if I don't pay my advanced tax, oh, is it a big thing which is going to attract against me? Let me tell you, my dear friend, there are two interest sections which are very important for advanced tax non-compliance. One is section 234C, second is section 234B. 234C is the section which is applicable for deferment of advanced tax. Now, what is deferment of advanced tax? Say, you are liable to pay by 15th of June out of rupees 1 lakh which is payable by you totally as an advance tax, say 15,000, and you don't pay. Suppose you pay it on 6, 17th of June. So you are just delaying by two days. But it is so rigor that even if you delay by two days period, you will be liable to pay three months interest to the government. So first three installment, you will be paying three months interest. And for the last installment, which is payable on 15th of March, you will be liable to pay one month interest. And the rate is 1%. So on an annual basis, this rate comes to 12%. One. Secondly, if you don't pay your advanced tax liability, it remains short ultimately by the end of financial year, then effective from 1st of April of the assessment year, say if I talk about current financial year 22-23, assessment year 23-24, suppose somebody paid a short advanced tax of 70,000, then effective 1st of April, such person will be liable to pay 234B interest further. Now what happens usually that we as an individual usually would take care of our final tax liability at the time of filing the return as per the due date, say 31st of July or 31st of October in audit cases. Now, at that time when you find that 70,000 rupees is due, you are already attracting 234C and effective 1st of April, say even up to July, you will be liable to pay four months interest. So that pinches a lot to the assessee. So if you will comply with during the financial year, it will save you a good amount of interest because many an assessee I have seen who have uh, complained why I could not take care of my advanced tax compliance earlier. So this is a kind of lesson which pitches you that okay, next time you should be better vigilant on your advanced tax compliance. Now an interesting query, what if advanced tax paid is on a higher side? If somebody in enthusiast like me says that okay, rather than 1 lakh, I'll pay 1 lakh 50,000. Then can I get some interest from the government? Yes, sir, why not? If you pay extra amount, then government will pay you interest at the rate half percent per month. But it will not pay you half percent per month from the date you make the extra payment. It will pay you effective from 1st of April of the assessment year, assuming that you are filing your return under section 139.1 within due date. And if you will file a belated return that you will skip your timely filing of return, then from the date you file your ITR, maybe under section 139.4, from that date you will be given interest at the rate half percent. So there is ideally no sense in paying uh, extra tax amount, 
but yes one should ensure that he should be near about closing on the advanced tax as per the requirement of law before i end my dear friend one very important point if you are interested in paying advanced tax what are the manners of making such payment for which i could not create a slide here i'm sorry for that one you can go to the banker and say that i want to pay through chalan then banker will let you know that chalan itns 280 and there you have to be very vigilant in terms of filling up the right assessment year say for financial year 22 23 assessment year is 23 24 you have to fill up assessment year so if you are filling up 23 24 you mean to pay advance tax for 22 23 that is one way you can pay through bank you can pay online also at the nsdl site and there you can click at uh, pay tax online then itns 280 through net banking or your uh, net banking or your debit card you can make such payment so that is another way of making the payment so i hope uh, these points which i have raised before you for advanced tax payment you would have found them worth it for your understanding and it would be helpful to you your relatives your friends in making your tax compliance better so that is all from my side through this video thank you very much my dear friends wishing you all the best jai